So today I'd like to talk about Boston Dynamics because they recently have decided that they are going to retire one of their flagstone robots, the Atlas robot. But it's not the end of Atlas. Instead, they're going to be releasing a new electric edition with more mobility, power, and it's also a bit more creepy. I really don't like the way it stands up. It, legs shouldn't move like that. I know that's the point. It's a robot, so it has more range of motion. It just makes me a bit uncomfortable. But for right now, let's go over some of the other projects that Boston Dynamics has done. Their first one being all the way back in 2004 was called Big Dog. Big Dog was meant to have adaptive balance. It was a quadruped and it was meant to just go over rough terrain and do whatever it needed to do. Was this funded by the U.S. Marines? Yes, but it was still a pretty impressive thing. Then next up we had Rise, which was a six-legged robot with the front part could bend and there was a tail that could bend and each leg had about 50 fishing hooks so it could climb rough surfaces like trees uh cinder block carpet could climb them with ease with using no sticky adhesives which i think is pretty impressive then we go to uh 2007 where we get our hex a six-legged rugged remote control vehicle recording thing this one was also funded by the u.s marines but i don't know it looks silly when it runs it just a little <laughs> the way the wheels flip and it just tosses itself around but it still gets the job done it does go um then we get to ls3 or legged squad support system i believe don't quote me on that i'll put a photo up but I, if i got it right i'm awesome but it is basically big dog but bigger um it could go 20 miles without refueling and it could carry 400 pounds of payload i will let y'all take a wild guess what that one was funded by just a wild guess um but then we go into more in intricate not intricate maybe intricate but also interesting robots like sand flea the one that can jump it's a tiny little robot only like uh very small i think like 11 pounds it was um it can jump i believe like 10 feet high if not higher with surprising accuracy and the way the wheels are built so it absorbs the shock and doesn't break is pretty impressive definitely a more interesting one we'll love to see more on that one but then again that's more just experimentation um then we get that was in 2012 by the way then according to the things timeline it's completely messed up but in 2011 we get wildcat wildcat was again funded by the u.s marines and the u.s military industrial complex whatever but this was the fastest one they ever made most of them can only go like three to five miles an hour this one could go all the way up to 19 was it stable no was it agile not really but still pretty cool pretty fast took some advanced uh advanced uh coding to get it to work because it had three different like walking styles still pretty impressive it's still meant for the u.s marines then we get to spot or spot classic as they call it back in 2015 it was their first indoor outdoor um robot and it was their first fully electric robot. And it had all of the features of the ones before it could run. Well, it wasn't super fast, but it had adaptive balance. It could climb stairs, hills. It could walk on ice. All of that stuff, pretty cool. And then in 2017, we get into what my favorite one is, because I think it just looks silly, Handle. It is a two-wheeled lifting arm robot meant to carry boxes and stuff. And it does its job very well. It just looks silly. That's all. But back to Atlas, because that's all of their legacy robots. Atlas was more so not intended for industrialization and sale, but more for just R&D. It would do crazy things like dancing, which... You know, dancing doesn't seem that crazy, but it tests the limits 
of what its joints can do, how fast and how far they can move. Um, then it did parkour, which was to test how good its balancing was. And it's really good at parkour. It can do a one-armed wall jump. I think that's pretty impressive. And then recently they had it carry a tool bag and other obstacles through a scaffolding course. And that was impressive. It was, it was jumping. It did an inverted ba triple backflip, I believe, which took a lot of coding. But Atlas has come a far, far away from what it originally was. And now it's basically reached its peak with the hydraulic form. So now they're moving to the electrical form in partnership with Hyundai which not only is funding them, but is also making new production facilities, which will be perfect for testing. I think it's going to be awesome because their current two robots that are for sale, Stretch, which is essentially a less complicated but more advanced handle, is pretty useful in the industrial field. It's used to just unload and load faster and faster than humans can. And then Spot, the new Spot, is incredibly useful for worksite. It can go into so many hazardous areas without causing harm to humans. It can find leaks in noisy environments. It can detect co uh, toxic chemicals before humans can. Spot is most often used in industrial areas, more in Europe than in here in America. But if you ever get a chance, you should see some of the stuff Spot does. Now, most, some people are slightly afraid of the new direction the Atlas project is taking because people are like, oh, humanoid robots are military and stuff. Boston Dynamics is actually very anti-gun, especially anti-gun in the hand of robot, um, which is really good because, yes, a lot of their early robots were meant for the U.S. Marines and military, but they're also mostly transport robots. But these new ones are meant to more be industrial and use there um one of the greatest things i ever got to see was the videos on the boston dynamics website which i recommend you checking out the videos of spot and atlas dancing and just doing their things are pretty impressive because like spot just got a software update allowing it to walk on slick surfaces uneven surfaces and loose surfaces as well as being able to walk up a lot, much larger ledge, which I think is amazing. But Atlas is the star of this. And within the next few months or years, we might start hearing more and more about just how advanced their robot can be. As long as they make, stop, make it stop standing up like a freaking psychopath. I'm sorry, but it, legs don't it just inverts itself and just switches directions without turning around. Each part of its body turns around independently. Its torso, its head, and its legs. I think the legs turning around was the worst part for me. But all in all, I am very excited to see where Boston Dynamics continues to go. It is a cool research company. I think some of their projects are amazing. Sure, they don't have many out for sale, but Spot and... uh spot and stretch are impressive and really good at what they do spot especially spot has saved lives not directly by rescuing but it is capable of doing that rescuing from rubble actually i think it has done that um i'll have to check rescuing from rubble detecting leaks going in high voltage areas where humans can't go that's it the new england power plant i believe in massachusetts uses it to routinely check and monitor its high voltage room because without having to do a planned outage. And when Spot notices something, which it tends to do because it's very good with its cameras, thermal cameras, gas, and leak detection, and sound detection, that's what I meant to say, they can plan an outage, therefore preventing a catastrophic fail, which would be amazing, which is amazing. It works on a bridge in Germany. Um, uh, there's a brewery in England. I forget which country and exactly. It does a lot of work there. Um, saves them a lot of money from like ammonia and carbon dioxide leaks. But all of their robots are incredibly useful. You don't hear a lot about stretch because it's kind of just, you get it, you deploy it, and it moves the boxes fast. 
that's it. I'm excited to hear about Atlas. Because having a humanoid robot with that much range of motion and that advanced capabilities, having Spot and Atlas on an industrial fleet would be incredible. And I'm excited to see where this goes. But for now, I do believe that'll be it. Um, hope y'all enjoyed, and maybe I'll have another subject for y'all.